All right. Well, here we are, peeps. My WWE 2021 Fast Lane predictions. Now, I've said it. Like, I've, I've said it in my last video. If you haven't seen my last video, go check it out. The problem with WrestleMania 37. In that video, I address what I believe is the main issue with WWE WrestleMania 37. So I'm not going to really go into all that because that was in my previous video. But go check that video out. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, WWE Fastlane 2021. Now, this show has no logical meaning whatsoever. I've said it, you know, it's like two, three weeks away from WrestleMania. And you're having another pay-per-view where there's no logical meaning, no story, no, no background, just nothing. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the matches were literally announced just last night on Monday Night Raw. Well, as I'm recording this video, it has been last night on Monday Night Raw because I'm recording this on a Tuesday and you're seeing this on a Wednesday morning. But again, it just it's just you can't really get excited for Fastlane. I mean, yeah, some of these matches are going to be pretty good, but again you can't really get excited for it because it's just like when you look at the card half of it is very predictable so again we're not going to waste any time um we're going to get into it oh by the way um i guess fast lane is apparently like a little test run because this is also uh, their first event with peacock now Beginning on April the 4th, you have to get Peacock. Like the WWE Network will no longer be standalone. Like you have to get Peacock. So this pay-per-view is a little test run to see how are they going to be able to work out it out on Peacock. And WrestleMania will officially be the first pay-per-view officially on Peacock. But this one, this will actually be the first, but it's just like a little test run. Like, you you get what I'm saying. Anyways, I'm not wasting any time. Um... We got a very predictable tag team match player for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler with Reginald taking on Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Now, uh, you know, it's just, man, I'm telling you, man, they really could have done more with Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Instead of putting them in a tag team, you could have had them, I mean, just... Feud, you know, like build build it up, have them go out and in promos, attack each other, you know, have Sasha just belittle Bianca, talk about how you don't deserve this opportunity, how you're just a rookie and, and all that stuff. But no, it's like let's put Reginald in here and then Nia and Shayna on. So it's just like they botched the feud in my opinion. I mean the match is gonna be great, but the the build up they, they kind of botched it in my opinion. And again, Reginald's going to get involved. There's some miscommunication between Sasha and Bianca. And then Nia and Shayna are going to pick up the win. And then we start to get Sasha Banks versus Bianca when we really should have gotten that when Bianca first chose Sasha on SmackDown. So, yes, I have Nia and Shayna obviously winning. Very predictable. We have a singles match for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. We have Big E taking on Apollo Crews. I've praised it on SmackDown. I'm loving this new heel character of Apollo Crews. I think this new heel turn for Apollo Crews really helped Apollo Crews and made him stand out a little bit. Because before Apollo Crews turned heel, I mean, great wrestler, but like character-wise, persona-wise, you're you're like, what like what does he do? And excuse my sister in the background, but. Again, with Apollo Crews, like, what what does he do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does he what does he do? So, with this new heel character, you kind of get him now, you know, especially coming in from his, you know, homeland, you know, Nigeria and stuff like that. Like, you can get where Apollo Crews is coming from. And Biggie, in my opinion, you know, he's been doing pretty good with, with the IC belt. Um... You know, Big E just needs to be his own self, you know, you know, just get rid of the New Day and just be Big E. But then at the same time, you know, Big E and the New Day is being himself. But either way, this is going to be a pretty good matchup. Now, I do think Apollo, I would like to see Apollo win, but I think Big E's going to win. But it's going to be like DQ. 
And maybe because you have Nakamura, um, you do a like a multi-man matchup at WrestleMania, and that's where you have Apollo Crews win the WWE Championship. So I'm in the Intercontinental Championship. Um, by the way, McIntyre and Lashley and Mania is pretty dope in my opinion. Um, so yeah. Okay, so speaking of McIntyre, we have a singles match between Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Now, these guys, and even though it's been pretty obvious that Drew McIntyre be going over, you've got to admit, every time they have faced each other, they've been it's just been great match after great match. Hell, Sheamus, for the past few weeks, months, has been having great matches. So... They're going to have another great match at Fastlane. But, again, McIntyre's obviously going to win because you have, M McIntyre's literally challenging for the WWE champion. He's, he has to walk into WrestleMania with a lot of momentum. So is Lashley. Now, this storyline is so effing stupid. <laughs> stupid. Stupid. Like... It's so stupid. Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon. This has got to be one of the worst storylines probably already this year alone. Like, the Alexa Bliss and, the, and Randy Orton storyline is much better than this storyline. Like, this storyline is pointless. Shane, I mean, oh, good God, I don't even want to talk about what happened on Monday Night Raw. Thank God I didn't even do a Raw review. Because, guys, this, I can't wait till this storyline is over. It's pointless. It's pointless for Strowman, and it's pointless for, for Shane. These two guys do not need to be... They don't need to be given this pile of crap. Yeah, I said it. Pile of crap. Strowman's going to win. Strowman just beat Shane. Well, they'll probably have another match at Mania, so... As much as I would like Strowman to win, um, I think... Sh well, he is going to win, but it's going to be like no DQ, and they're going to have another match at uh, WrestleMania where Strowman just beats the heck out of McMahon, and then boom, 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 yada, boom, it's it's over. And then Strowman moves on. Thank God. Okay, so we have an intergender match. An intergender match. Sorry for butchering my words there. Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. Guys, if there isn't any other way for the fiend to come back this is it me personally i do think randy orton does go over here but i do think this is where we're going to see the return of randy orton i mean the fiend and hell with the return of the fiend i wouldn't be surprised if this match is the main event in my opinion well probably semi-main event but i wouldn't be surprised if it main events but this is the perfect time you do the fiend you have the fiend come back fiend orton wrestlemania good way to end the storyline but as for this match it's going to be pretty interesting what happens but i got orton winning this one and now the main events the universal championship will be defended as roman reigns the head of the table the tribal chief defends against daniel bryan with edge or jay uso as the special guest enforcer i've said this a lot i think what's gonna happen roman's gonna win but something's going to happen. Edge is going to, something's going to happen where Edge might get involved and it might cause Roman to beat Daniel Bryan. And then that leads to a triple threat match between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns and Edge at WrestleMania. I really do think that is the match they're going to try to do. Now, it should be Reigns versus Edge. But, I mean, despite this match, what else are they going to do with Daniel Bryan? Are they going to give him a match with Rollins, Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens has nothing planned for WrestleMania. You really want Kevin Owens to face Rollins a second time? Well, he'll probably just get left out. But, but you know, I, I don't know, guys. I just don't know. Anyways, those are my WWE Fastlane predictions. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel. You know, like for more content. Give me any video ideas. And so, um, yeah.